Greetings, I'm the dentist. In our Dent Agenda, we will be continuing the second chapter, Preventive and Community Dentistry. These are the points included in this chapter video series, and in this video, all your questions about fluoride will be answered. These are the points we are going to cover in this video. Fluoride is a mineral that occurs naturally and is released from the rocks into the soil, water and air. Almost all water contains some fluoride, but usually not enough to prevent tooth decay. Fluoride can also be added to drinking water supplies as a public health measure for reducing cavities, since the concentration of fluoride in enamel increases with increased fluoride content in drinking water. Firstly, we are going to talk about mechanisms of fluoride action in reducing tooth decay. Commencing with the effects of fluoride on enamel in the pre-eruptive stage. It helps to improve crystallinity and increase crystal size decreases acid solubility and aids in forming more rounded cusps and fissure pattern, but the effect is small. Discontinuation of systemic fluoride results in an increase in caries. Now to the post-eruptive effects of fluoride on enamel. Keep in mind that newly erupted teeth derive the most benefit. It inhibits demineralization and promotes remineralization of early caries. Also, enhances the degree and speed of remineralization and renders the remineralized enamel more resistant to farther attack. Also, it decreases the acid production in plaque by inhibiting glycolysis in cariogenic bacteria. An increased concentration of fluoride in plaque inhibits the synthesis of extracellular polysaccharides. Note that the fluoride is more effective in reducing smooth surface caries than pits and fissure decay. Now to the safety and toxicity of fluoride. Fluoride is present in all natural waters to some extent, and if not, it can be added as a public health measure. And since it can be added, we should keep in mind and be aware that the simple chemicals are toxic when consumed in excess, and the same is true for fluoride. When the fluoride enters the body, it is absorbed rapidly, mainly in the stomach, and the peak blood level occurs one hour later. Then it is excreted via the kidneys, but traces can be found in breast milk of nursing mothers and in saliva. Keep in mind that placenta in pregnant women only allows a small amount of fluoride to cross, thus the prenatal fluoride is relatively ineffective to the fetus. Now we will discuss the doses of fluoride that our body can deal with. Starting with the safely tolerated dose, this is the dose below which symptoms of toxicity are unlikely, and it's about 1 mg of fluoride per kilogram of body weight. Secondly, the potentially lethal dose. This is the lowest dose associated with fatality, starting with 5 mg of fluoride per kilogram of body weight. And finally, the certainly lethal dose. In this case, the survival is unlikely. This ranges between 32 to 64 milligrams of fluoride per kilogram of body weight are present in the patient's body. After we have discussed the doses tolerated by our bodies, we should be aware of the fluoride content in products that we use on a daily basis. Number one, the standard fluoride content in toothpaste. 
A regular toothpaste tube contains from 1000 to 1500 parts per million of fluoride, which is equal to 1 to 1.5 milligrams of fluoride per milliliters. And to associate that with a safely tolerated dose, you can imagine swallowing toothpaste milliliters equal to your body weight, which is unlikely to happen. The fluoride mouth rinse contains 5 hundredths percent of sodium fluoride, which is equal to 23 hundredths milligrams of fluoride per milliliters. And fluoride varnish that we use in dental practice contains about 5 percent of sodium fluoride, which is equal to 22.6 milligrams per milliliters. To reach the 5 mg of fluoride per kilogram of body weight threshold, which is the potentially lethal dose, the stage that requires hospitalization, a 5-year-old who weighs about 19 kg would have to ingest 95 tablets of 1 mg fluoride content, or about 63 milliliters of 1,500 parts per million of fluoride toothpaste. Now that we have learned about the problem, let's learn how to solve it. Antidotes in case of toxicity. In case of toxification with less than 5 mg of fluoride per kilogram of body weight, you should give the person a large volume of milk. Milk has a proven role in reducing the absorption of fluoride, since it is rich in calcium that has a fluoride binding effect. But in case intoxication with more than 5 mg of fluoride, per kilogram of body weight, you must refer to the hospital immediately for gastric lavage. In case of any delay, give intravenous calcium gluconate and anemetic to aid emptying the stomach. A fluoride-related dental problem that you may face in your dental practice is fluorosis. Fluorosis, or mottling, occurs due to the long-term excessive consumption of fluoride. It is endemic in areas with a high level of fluoride occurring naturally in water. Clinically, it can vary from faint white opacities to severe pitting and discoloration. Histologically, it is caused by increased porosity in the outer third of enamel thickness. The degree of mottling increases as the concentration of parts per million of fluoride increases in the drinking water supply. Now to how to plan fluoride therapy for your patients. The first line of fluoride therapy would be systemic fluoride. To minimize the risk of mottling, only one, and I stress on only one, systemic measure should be used at a time. Number one, water fluoridation at one part per million, which is equal to one milligram of fluoride per liter. Water fluoridation reduces caries by about 50%. The main advantages are that the fluoridated water has both systemic and topical effects on teeth. No effort is required on the part of the individuals, and the cost is low. In some countries, school water has been fluoridated, but a concentration of 5 parts per million is required to offset the less frequent water intake. Number 2. Fluoride drops and tablets. The regimen of fluoride in milligrams per day depends upon the drinking water content of fluoride. This approach can be almost as effective as fluoridated water, but requires good parental motivation. Unfortunately, compliance is generally poor and benefit as a public health measure is questionable. Number three, milk. It contains about 2.5 to 7 parts per million of fluoride. It has been tried successfully. It is not costly and effective for rural communities in developing countries where water fluoridation is not feasible. Another line of fluoride therapy is topical fluoride application. 
The most important action of fluoride is to favor remineralization of early carious lesions. Although fluoride incorporated within the developing enamel results in a high local concentration, the maximum benefit appears to be derived from the frequent low concentration of topical fluoride administration. Professionally applied fluorides come in the form of gel or foam and varnish. By this method, there is an overall cast decrease of 20 to 40 percent. Gels or foams applied in trays are still popular in some parts of the world, but without adequate suction, the systemic dosage can be high and patients may not tolerate these so well. Fluoride varnish is useful for applying directly to individual lesions to aid arrest them. Fluoride varnish has been shown to be effective in decreasing caries incidence in children and regular application by about two times per year to three or four times per year where caries risk is increased is now advocated for all children over the age of three years deemed to be at risk of caries. However, it should be applied carefully and sparingly, especially in young children, as it contains about 22,600 parts per million of fluoride. Application of some varnishes is contraindicated in patients suffering from asthma. Other form of fluoride application is rinsing solution. It is contraindicated in children younger than seven years to avoid the risk of drinking it or swallowing it accidentally. The most widely used solution is sodium fluoride. It should be used at a separate time to brushing and the concentration of fluoride depends upon the frequency of use. It should be about 0.2% for weekly use or 500% for daily use. Daily use is the most beneficial. Caris reduction of 16 to 50% have been reported with rinsing alone. The usual method to administer fluoride is tooth brushing. Keep in mind that you should brush at least twice daily. Children over the age of 3 and those at increased risk of developing caries should use 1,300 to 1,500 parts per million fluoride toothpastes. Regarding the amount, children under the age of 3 should use just a smear, and for children over the age of 3 and for adults, a small pea-sized blob is enough. After you brush, spit out well and do not rinse after brushing. Brushing with fluoride toothpaste should start as soon as the first teeth erupt, around 6 months of age. Parents should supervise brushing up to at least 7 years of age to avoid over-ingestion of toothpaste and ensure adequate plaque removal. And here you have it all regarding fluoride. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. I'd like to have you here for more videos. And follow us on Instagram at Dented Gender for extra tips and tricks.